Yep, you heard me right. We're talking about the S word, and the S word is sublimation. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Crafting with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda, and thank you so much for joining me today. You heard me right. We're talking about sublimation. I am going to be sharing 10 of the things I wish I had known before I got started with my sublimation journey, and hopefully they will be helpful to you if you have not gotten started with the, your journey into sublimation. So at any time during this video, if you're finding these tips helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, when I started to put my top 10 things that I wish I had known about sublimation list together, I thought they needed to be in a specific order. But then as I started to really pay attention to what was on the list, I realized that everything on the list is of equal importance. So let's start with just first things first. The first thing I want you to know is that startup will be expensive. When you first get started with sublimation, it is going to cost some money. So let's just say today, you said to, you woke up today and you said, you know what? Today is the day. I'm ready to get started with sublimation. There are seven things you're going to need in order to get started with sublimation. This is the list of seven. You're going to need a printer. You're going to need a dedicated printer. You're going to need sublimation ink sublimation paper, a heat, a heat source, heat tape, butcher paper, and you're going to need sublimation blanks. So if today is the day, buy all seven of these things. Now what I did was I started to look online to just price a few things. Even though I have all of these things and then some, because if you've been following me for any length of time, you know I'm a shopper. I started to just price out things to see how much they would cost. The cheapest printer that I could find that could be converted to use with sublimation ink was $199. And the cheapest printer that I could find that already comes ready-made, already good to go for sublimation was $609. Now that, that one is a sawgrass. And so a sawgrass printer is already prepared. It comes with ink. It comes, it's like a whole little bundle that comes together. That one was $609. So let's just say today is the day and you have a spare $609. That's not going to negatively impact your family. Go for it. Okay. So just go for it. However, if that's not what's in your budget, let's look at some of the other options. So I kind of just made a list and we're going to calculate the list to see what that looks like. So I looked at my printer right here, this printer right here, which is an Epson EcoTank 2760 that I converted to use with sublimation ink. I'm using my air quotes because converted means I just used sublimation ink instead of the ink that comes with the printer. The ink that came with this printer is in a box that I have in my closet. It is not the ink that I put in this printer. So when I looked online today for a printer that's just like this, this exact model, I found one for $317 on Amazon, okay? So $317 plus we're going to need paper. I found the exact paper that I use, which is a sub sublimation paper. I found a pack of a sub paper for $20. So we have 317 plus $20, okay? So right now we're at $337. Then you're going to need ink. The exact ink that I use, I found it online. The cheapest one I found was $29. So plus 29, okay? So that takes us to $366. Then you're going to need a heat source because you you're going to need one. You can't use an iron. So the cheapest one that I could find, you could get an easy press. You can get an off-brand press. It doesn't have to be a big heat press. You can find one that will get up to 400 degrees. I found one for $100. So now we're at $466. You're going to need heat-resistant tape. I found some for $4 online. All of this stuff I found on Amazon. So now we're at $470. 
You're also going to need butcher paper. I found some butcher paper online on Amazon for $13 and that takes us to 400, let me make sure you can see that. That takes us to $483. And then let's just say you were going to make a shirt. For your first project, your first sublimated image, the first time out the gate, you wanna make a shirt. I found a Cricut brand shirt, which is polyester. I found one on Amazon for $6, okay? So, so plus six. That gives us a grand total of $489. That's not including tax. Um, that doesn't include shipping if you're not an Amazon Prime member, but that's just a base price of $489. And let's just say we needed to round it up for tax or shipping. Let's just say we rounded it up to $500. So if you were going to get started with sublimation today and you didn't have any of the products you needed, you will be looking at right at about $500. Okay, so that's one harsh truth that I wish I had known before I got started with sublimation. Okay, let's move on to the next tip. Here's my next tip. You will need a designated printer to use with sublimation ink. Now, this is the first printer that I had. This is a Canon inkjet printer. I use this just for my regular everyday household printing if I need to print out something quickly for work or things like that. But this right here is my first um, sublimation printer that I purchased. This one is an Epson EcoTank 2760 and I did have to convert it. I'm using air quotes because when I say I had to convert it, really what that means is I did not put the ink in here that came with the printer. Now I have this box that I keep all of the my old or my unused ink in. This is the ink that actually came with the printer and I still have it sealed and I don't have a, I'm not going to throw it away because I don't throw things away like this, but um, I did not open it because I knew I would not be using it. So when you purchase a printer, in most cases, it comes with ink. Just, this Epson came with ink. This Epson right here is an Epson EcoTank 15,000. This is a wide format printer. It will print up to 13 by 19. This one goes up to eight and a half by 14. I love both of these printers. Both of these printers now have sublimation ink in them. All of the ink that came in the box, I still have them here packaged away. Now, if you are considering purchasing an Epson printer in order to use with sublimation, please know there is a difference between an Epson EcoTank and an Epson Workforce. EcoTanks actually come with four individual tanks that are easy to um, add the ink to. Workforces require some actual conversion. That's when you will be using the syringes and you have the cartridges with the it is a whole process. I, Before I got started with this process, I did not fully understand what I would be getting into by purchasing a workforce. I do have one. I used it several times and I quickly realized that it does go through the ink very, very fast in my opinion. This printer right here, I've had this printer for over two years and I've only refilled it once. And even when I refilled it, it wasn't empty. The ink wasn't empty. I only refilled it for the purpose of demonstrating how to refill it. Okay, so the ink lasts a very long time in the Epson EcoTanks. And so if you're on the hunt for an EcoTank, I highly suggest, or on the hunt for a printer that can be converted to use with sublimation, I highly suggest getting an Epson EcoTank. I do not encourage you to get an Epson Workforce. Okay, let's move on to the next tip. Here's my next tip. You will need a heat source and a household iron just won't do. Now here's our household iron. I love this iron. I think it's cute. I think it matches a lot of stuff we have in our house, but it won't work for my sublimation projects, okay? You will need a heat source that will get to at least 385 degrees at a minimum. Now, remember when I was going through the list of things and I said heat source, I did not say heat press because of course you could use a Cricut Easy Press um, because that will go up to you know 385 degrees at least. It'll go even higher. 
However, you want to make sure you get a heat press that is reliable, that has a good flat, nice size surface, that has a good heating element. Um, a Cricut Easy Press is where I started and I quickly realized that I needed a bigger heating element. So my, my advice, and you can take it or leave it, my advice when you are thinking about purchasing a heat press is get the biggest one you can afford because it is much easier to get a smaller one than it is to just keep getting a bigger one, okay? So if you can you know, afford a 15 by 15, I think that's a nice quality, nice perfect size for getting started, but you definitely need a heat source that will, remember, reach at least 385 degrees Fahrenheit at a minimum. All right, let's move on to our next tip. Now at this point, you might be wondering, Delanda, what is sublimation? What are you even talking about? Well, the process of sublimation in its simplest terms, it just means that you are using a specific printer that is intended to be used with sublimation ink. You're going to use sublimation paper and the ink that is printed on that paper goes through a thermal heating process as it goes through the printer. When it comes out, that ink is turned into a gas once it gets heated up and the ink is infused into whatever polyester uh, fabric or polyester coated material that you have. So it is intended to be used with white or light colored polyester. And in my opinion, and this is a matter of opinion in terms of my next tip, sublimation works best with white or light colored polyester. Now there are multiple ways or multiple hacks that you can actually go through the sublimation process and use a hack and use it on darker colors. However, it absolutely looks best. And I'm using a word that's normally used as an opinion. I'm taking it as a fact. It looks best on white or light colored fabrics. Let's look at some examples. Here is one example of a shirt that I've sublimated using Hippo Sublimation Ink and my Epson Eco Tank 2760. I do have a tutorial on my channel for this shirt um, and hopefully you can see that the ink is in the fabric. So with sublimation, if you like do a little bit of research, you'll see that the sublimation ink is intended to last on the fabric. I think it'll even outlast the fabric. Um, according to what I've read, it, it you know it doesn't smear, it doesn't wash away. This shirt has been washed multiple times. Here's another example of a shirt that I've sublimated. I did this one. I think I did this one live, or I have the record. Either one, one of these was done live, and one of these was on a recorded tutorial. Same thing. The ink is in the fabric. And here is another shirt that I've done with just this is these are all Cricut brand shirts and the ink is, you know, it's in there. It's not on the fabric. Now, there are other options for doing sublimation. Like I was explaining, in my opinion, it looks better on white or light polyester. Let's look at some other examples. This first shirt is an example of sublimation on 65% polyester, 35% cotton. This is a George brand shirt that was purchased from Walmart. And while I did use the same sublimation printer and sublimation ink, and the ink is in the fabric, you can see the colors are not as vibrant. Here is another example of that same process, same shirt, 65% uh, polyester, 35% cotton. You can see that the ink is not as vibrant. This is another example. This one is 100% cotton. I use my sublimation printer and my sublimation ink. Um, and because sublimation is intended to be used on polyester, even though this shirt is white, I had to use what's considered as a hack in order to get a vibrant image. So underneath the sublimation print, I used Sublimation HTV by HTV Ron in order to get this butterfly image placed on this cotton shirt. 
This is another example of a hack. This is sublimation on glitter vinyl or glitter HTV. So I did this one live maybe a little over a year ago now. And so that's another option. This butterfly shirt is an example of a hack. So this is white heat transfer vinyl with the sublimation HTV on top followed by the sublimated image. Now, most people ask, why can't I just put the sublimated image on top of the white HTV? And that is because you cannot sublimate on just regular white HTV. And if you don't believe me, just give it a try and I'll be I'm happy to hear about your results. This is another example of that same exact process with the layer of white HTV the clear sublimation HTV, and then the sublimated image on top of that. This shirt has been washed multiple times. And then this last shirt is an example of Caesar Easy Subly on a dark fabric. And I think this shirt is, okay, it's 98% cotton. So Caesar Easy Subly is also an option that you could use on dark fabrics and fabrics that are not polyester. Okay, let's move on to our next tip. My next tip is you might make a mistake. You might, you know, during this process, make a few mistakes. And trust me when I say I have made enough mistakes for pretty much everyone on the planet, but it has not discouraged me from continuing to give it the good old college try. Okay, so let me show you some examples of mistakes I've made. This is actually a photo keychain that I made of my husband and I. I did this one probably mm, maybe a few months ago, and I forgot to mirror um, because I had words on the pictures and this is what it looks like when you make a mistake like that okay so this is one mistake this is a mistake that i made when i was sublimating this bag for my sister so i did not have enough pressure under my heat press and you know the top of the image looks really good but right right down here you can see that the letters are lighter and it's not supposed to look like that it's supposed to be dark and vibrant all the way through um, this is one of those card holders that goes on the back of a, a phone case. And uh, this part right here is not supposed to be sublimated. I was actually supposed to protect this part of the card holder and I forgot to do that. And so that's a mistake and it's okay. Now I'm going to show you something that is infusible ink, but it's still a mistake nonetheless. Okay. So one of these things is not like the other. <laughs> Um, so I was making a mug with infusible ink. I actually used infusible ink markers here and I was trying to just put my initial on a mug. And so I got it wrong one time and I got it right one time. So look, I'm, my odds were what 50, 50 and, and I was able to get it right the second time. So, um, I would encourage you to keep going because you might, you just might make a few mistakes. Let's move on to our next one concept that might be hard to grasp as you get started with sublimation is that your measurements will not be exact. So usually when you're sublimating a shirt, you have a little bit of flexibility and freedom in where you place the image, but it is not the case when you are sublimating a blank. So let me show you what I mean by that. This is a Cricut coaster and these are sized at 3.75 by 3.75. So when I made my images in Cricut Design Space, I made them at that size because I did not know I needed to make the images a little bit bigger. So as you can see, there is a little bit of white right here along the side of the image because I did not allow for more space to go around the image. This is another one from that same set because I made all four of the images the same size, right at 3.75. Same thing down here. And then here on this image. That also happens sometimes on tumblers, but it could happen pretty much on any blank that you're sublimating. So on this tumbler right here, I was able to go around the image, but I can see where I did not make my print long enough to completely cover the image so you can see a definite 
seam right there. Okay, so your measurements will not be exact when you are sublimating a blank. All right, let's move on to our next tip. My next tip actually comes in two parts. Number one, you will need to be a little bit tech savvy regarding software, but you will also need to be a little bit tech savvy regarding printers. Let's talk about software first. So with regards to software, as you start to go deeper and learn more about sublimation, you will learn that Cricut Design Space does have its limits. So some of the different software options that you might start to learn more about are these three. I'll start with these three, Canva, Inkscape, and Silhouette Studio. All three of these um, applications come with a free version. Of course, there's also a paid version of each of these. And, you know, when you have something that you're paying for, it's going to come with more features. I do use Canva the most out of these three. I have played around a little bit with Inkscape, and I know pretty much some of the basics of how to use Silhouette Studio. Adobe Illustrator, to my knowledge, does not come with a free um, application. However, I know there are, you know, different options for making a purchase of Adobe Illustrator. So when you start to go beyond the basics of, you know, just downloading files and you want to get into creating your own files, you might start to look at some of these different software options. With regard to being tech savvy regarding printers, Let's move over to the computer so I can show you what I mean by that. I am on the Epson.com website, and it is important that I let you know before we start to navigate through this site that if you purchase an Epson EcoTank printer and you intend to use it for sublimation, so you have decided you're going to put the sublimation ink in the printer, you will void your warranty and you will not be eligible for support from Epson. It's important that I let you know that just in case you think, oh, I can just put this sublimation ink in there and they will still support me. They won't. OK, because you are accepting responsibility for the printer if you do that. However, if you've decided you're going to just go ahead and take a chance, let me show you what you'll need to do. You'll need to go to the Epson website and what I would do is click search and I would search for the exact printer that I purchased. So in my case, I purchased an Epson EcoTank 2760. So in the search bar, I would type ET 2760 and I'll see that my printer comes up. So if I click on support, what I'm actually looking for is the drivers that go along with this printer. So it automatically pops up and it says, based on the operating system they've detected from looking at my computer, these are the drivers that should be downloaded. So I would go through the whole process and just follow the on-screen prompts to get the drivers installed. In order to use the printer, you're going to have to connect the printer to your com computer based on the operating system you have. So a lot of times I know it's frustrating because you think, oh, I bought the printer. All I do is plug it up and I'm ready to go. There are some things you're going to have to know how to do in order to use the printer. So that's why I say you're going to need to be a little bit tech savvy in order to get your printer up and ready to go. This does not even include getting the printer settings. That's a whole different tutorial, but this is just a part of the things I wish I had known before I got started with my sublimation process. Okay, let's move on to the next tip. I hope this tip was helpful. My next tip is you will need specific materials. So in the intro, I said you would need a printer, Sublimation ink. This is the one I use. It's called Hippo. You're going to need sublimation paper. This is the one I use. I use the A-Sub 125 grams. You will need a heat source. That's going to be the one you choose. You will need heat tape. I use the Cricut brand. You will need butcher paper. You can find it online at Amazon. You will need something that's called sublimation blanks. Let me show you several examples of sublimation blanks. 
The first blank that I want to show you is this Cricut bag and notice that it says compatible with infusible ink. If you see a product listed like this and it says compatible with infusible ink, that means it can also be used for sublimation because infusible ink is sublimation ink. Now this Cricut bag is 100% polyester and you'll find that with most Cricut products, they are either 95% polyester or right at 100% polyester. So here's one example of a sublimation blank. Cricut mugs are considered as sublimation blanks because they do have a polyester coating on them. You see the symbol right there that is compatible with infusible ink. These wine glass sleeves are sublimation blanks. I actually sublimated a few of these for the ladies in my book club and they fell in love with them. This is an example of a Cricut mug that I sublimated uh, just recently. Um, there are just so many options. This is a dog bowl <laughs> that can be sublimated. I'll leave a link below if you're interested in trying that. I have not done a tutorial on this, but I will in the very near future. This is a Cricut shirt. I love the Cricut shirts because the shirts have um, excellent quality and to me, the fabric is not thin or see-through. I actually love those. This bag came from Michaels. It's the Imaginate brand, and it is 100% polyester. These bags are very, very, very reasonably priced. I think they're right at $2, and they're 100% polyester. Here's another Cricut product. This is uh, the Cricut Cosmetic Bags, and there are two bags in here. And these are also 100% polyester. Here's um, a wine tumbler that you could sublimate. There are just tons of options. There are cell phone cases. Um, I have a lot of different sublimation blanks. Now, I typically order my sublimation blanks from Amazon. And when I do, I keep them in the box and I just label what is in the box. So these are sublimation um, keychains. These are some of those uh, sublimation little, I guess they call it like a key fob or a keychain, a wristlet that you can wear on your wrist. There are sublimation blanks that are luggage tags. So this is one I did a few, maybe a little over a year ago. This is a sublimation lanyard. So haven't done those yet. Um, there are just tons and tons of options. These are sublimation bookmarks. Um, I was able to make some of these for the ladies in my book club. They fell in love with those also. These are sublimation dog tags. Let's see what they look like. So they come with a blank like this and then it comes with the, the actual tag that goes with it and then these sublimation bottle openers, they look like this, so you would just be sublimating on that part right there. The possibilities for sublimation blanks are literally endless. I could go on and on, but I think you get where I'm going with this, okay? Let's move on to the next tip. My last and final tip is this. You don't need to be in a rush just because it feels like everyone else is doing it. That is the essence of peer pressure. And I don't want you to feel that way. If you are in Facebook groups and you see a lot of people have gotten started with sublimation and now you feel like you need to get started with sublimation, you see that Cricut has increased their print then cut size and everyone is using these wide format printers, please do not be in a rush or feel like you have to be in a rush to get started with sublimation. My advice regarding that is to get started with infusible ink. Infusible ink is sublimation ink. It will follow pretty much the same process. I have a full box of infusible ink. I love it. I have a playlist on my YouTube channel dedicated to infusible ink. You will get nice, vibrant results. You will have ink that is in the fabric and you will be able to experience what the process of sublimation looks like without the $500 startup. 
If you found this tutorial helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching. Bye!